Welcome back to Elfbound Gaming. It is Neckrage again coming at you with another build. Technically two builds. I'm going to show you why. So this is a, a Storm Hardcore Druid build. Two of them. We're going to go over them, but they're very similar. I'm going to show you why I consider them two different builds. So we're going to start off with our boons. 10% uh, reduced damage from elites. 10% maximum life gain. Super important for, for survivability in Hardcore. By the way, I always mention this. Elites also means bosses. Works on bosses, works on act bosses, works on world bosses. Very good stuff. Fortify for 10% of your maximum life when you use a defensive skill. Lucky hit. Nature magic skills have up to a 15% chance of reduce the cooldown of your ultimate skill by 2 seconds. That's great. And then a lucky hit. Dealing lightning damage has up to a 20% chance to cause the target to emit a static discharge, dealing 20% lightning damage to surrounding enemies. Moving on to the skill tree. We are starting with Stormstrike. Now, there are two builds available. You can, you, you can go with Stormstrike. This is a melee attack, but it gives you 25% damage reduction. It is also an awesome group clearing ability. So you melee an enemy, and it chains up to three surrounding enemies, dealing 20% less damage each time it jumps. You gain the 25% damage reduction. And then uh, we have a chance to immobilize all enemies hit for 2.5 seconds, and a 50% chance to make them vulnerable. That's great. The other option is two additional targets it'll jump to. It's okay. The two additional targets is okay. It hits more damage. I mean, hits more enemies, but they do 20% less damage each jump. So it'll do very little damage on the next two targets. Vulnerable is better, in my opinion. It's just all around better. It's the way to go. And that's that's the highest vulnerability chance on like any, any skill in the game. 50% chance to make enemies vulnerable for three seconds. That's amazing. The other option is Wind Shear. If you want to stay completely ranged, you would pick this up. Uh, you pick up Wind Shear. Wind Shear has a 20% chance to make enemies vulnerable for 4 seconds. You can go with either movement speed, or you can go with the one that gives you 3 additional spirit for each en enemy hit beyond the first. So you uh, essentially get spirit a little bit quicker over here. This one generates 14 spirit, this generates 12. But as they pierce through enemies, you do get more spirit. Uh, so you can get more spirit with Wind Shear usage over Storm Strike. Completely up to you. But I do like, I like both. They're both great. They're both complete uh, vi uh, viable options to play. 25% re damage reduction is amazing. And I'm going to go into why I, I lean a little bit more towards the melee. I'll show you why. Not only do I like the ability better, but there's some other stuff. Tornado being one of them. We do have Lightning Storm, which is considered like like... It's Storm, it's Nature Magic, it's Storm. You could use this. I hate it for Hardcore. I hate it. You have to sit still and you channel this for so long. You channel it and you pretty much have your hands up like that and storms are coming down on an enemy. It's a cool ability. I really wish that they designed it almost like Meteor from D2 where you'd use it and then it would slam down. But instead you'd use it and it would grow. Like a circle would start growing out, 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 out. And the storm size would increase and it would strike down in a larger radius towards the end of the duration. That's how I think it should have been designed, but it's a channel. Problem with channels is you are doing nothing else while channeling and you are sitting there. Dangerous situation, right? The other thing. If you're going with Storm Strike and you're getting a damage reduction for three seconds, you don't want to be channeling Lightning Storm long enough that you run out of that damage reduction. That wears off for three seconds. After three seconds, you could be channeling Lightning Storm past that three seconds. You no longer have that 25% damage reduction. You're standing still. You're taking hits more often. And it kind of sucks because as an enemy comes to hit you, you're going to dodge. You want to dodge out of the way, and you'd interrupt your Lightning Storm, causing... Less damage, essentially, and interrupted ability. So I prefer Tornado, especially in melee, because these things are a little, like, erratic. They kind of do what they want, but if you're in someone's face and you use it, it's going to hit them. It's just, it doesn't matter what it does after, it's going to hit them. And it's a good crowd clearer, too, because it kind of, you know, goes everywhere, and there's a 20% chance to spawn an additional Tornado. So they hit for 49% damage, not bad at all, and 20% uh, chance to spawn an additional Tornado. Then enemies damaged by the Tornado are slowed by 8% for 3 seconds, stacking up to 40%. The other option is... A chance to become vulnerable. We don't need the vulnerable. I'd rather go with the slow because we have a crazy amount of uh, crazy high vulnerability chance for three seconds. We really don't need that. Moving on to the defensive skills. Now, if we're playing in melee, um, we can use this to knock back enemies if we want to uh, distance ourselves to maybe heal or something. But even the passive usage of the non physical damage reduction is great. And then uh, if you do knock back enemies, they are slowed again. So you can you can use that knock back uh, enemies that are maybe a little more dangerous and throw tornadoes at them with the rest of your uh, your spirit that you have. And then every 10 seconds, um, it gets stronger. It intensifies, causing incoming damage to grant you 30% damage reduction for two seconds. That's amazing. Um, 
The other option is vulnerable. We, again, we don't need any more vulnerable. So I would go with this. So it's got its uses. Even as melee, there are going to be times when you want to push enemies away. Definitely going to be times. Um, plus the, um, the slow is great and the, the additional damage reduction is just fantastic. I always grab these two, three out of three on both of them for every hardcore druid build. Increase your non-physical resistances by 15%. That's absurd. That is so good. That's one of the best passives in the game on anyone's tree for hardcore. Get that. <laughs> You gain 15% damage reduction for 6 seconds after using a defensive skill, so if you use this one or this one here, Earthen Bulwark, it's going to trigger the damage reduction as well, so it's another reason to use it. Um, Earthen Bulwark, surround yourself for 3 seconds, grant you 45% of your base life as, as a barrier, which is good to keep you alive, and of course it is unstoppable. Grant's unstoppable, which gets you out of any crowd control, and for those of you who don't know, I always mention it, if you are crowd controlled, you cannot use a potion while you're stunned. Some, some crowd controls you can, like, slows and immobilizes. You can still use it because you have control of your character, just not the movement. You can still use a potion then, but if you are stunned, you can't, and that can lead to your death. And that is very bad in hardcore, because when we die, we lose our characters, right? Uh, a way to get Fortify, Earth and Bulwark. We run all the way down here. We don't grab anything. Um, another reason why I like melee... This is more of a, a melee range type of ability. Uh, it does a decent amount of damage around you for 8 seconds. Um, enemies who are damaged by Hurricane are slowed, so more slows. Enemies affected by Hurricane deal 20% less damage. So another way to stay stay in melee, pop this, do more damage. They do less damage to you. You're getting them to do 20% less damage. You're getting the 25% damage reduction um, uh, from Storm Strike. So that's great. The, you have damage reduction from elites, from the uh, from your spirit boons here. So you do have quite a bit of survivability. You have your earthen ball work. You have your cyclone armor giving you reduced damage taken. And we're going to jump into here. This is another reason why I like the hurricane, because it ticks, um, ticks like eight times, so it's eight hits. And you have stuff like this. Um, another another option to make enemies vulnerable. I know we said I said we don't really need more vulnerability, but it's nice to add vulnerable to all storm skills with this with this ability here, with this passive, and that'll that'll so Hurricane, when you're hitting a big crowd of enemies, you have a chance to apply Vulnerable to various targets in that crowd, rather than just relying on Storm Strike. So here, kind of kind of worth it. Kind of worth adding that. Um, every 12 seconds, Lightning Bolt hits a nearby enemy for 45% damage. That's actually not bad. That's a pretty decent ability. Pretty decent passive. You could only put... You could put one point in it and keep it like that. Um... I am not grabbing Endless template, Tempest here, which increases the duration of Hurricane and the Cataclysm. I'd prefer to put the extra points here. Make that, uh... You know, strike down while you're fighting a boss. That's just additional auto, you know, automatic damage. And maybe as if you're being evasive, you're dodging. You're kind of scared to get in there on that boss. It's it's doing some damage for you. It's striking down on the enemy. It's not amazing damage, but every 12 seconds, 45 percent. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, and it can also trigger lucky hits like this. Dealing lightning damage to to enemies has up to a 15 percent chance to immobilize them for three seconds. If the target is already immobilized, lightning damage dealt to them is increased by 15 percent. That can trigger an immobilize. In addition to that. Nature magic skills have up to a 15% chance to reduce the cooldown of your ultimate uh, skills by 2 seconds. So the more nature skills we're using, the better. And then, lucky hit, dealing lightning damage has up to a 20% chance to cause the target to emit a static discharge, dealing 20% lightning damage to surrounding enemies. So, while this won't work on the automatic thing, you have to use your skills to have a chance to reduce the cooldown, but the more skills, the better, right? This will. That will impact the lightning damage from from this so that can trigger even more effects so lightning bolt will strike down it'll cause an aoe around the target and even do more damage so it, it's good and then um did i go over this 30 percent chance when dealing damage to a vulnerable immobilized or stunned enemy there that a lightning bolt also hits dealing 55 percent damage i don't think i went over that um so enemies are almost always going to be uh vulnerable we have a lot of immobilizes in the build so this is almost always going to be active when you're hitting targets so there's even more effects that can come out so more lightning bolts more like kind of randomized damage effects that are happening so there's a lot more damage in this build than it seems there's a lot of little procs that you can get then you can get a uh, lucky hit increases on your gear and that could actually be a very useful stat to go to in this build try to get some pieces with an increased lucky hit chance so you can have um have those procs uh, another thing to consider is the lucky hit chance difference between wind shear is 20 percent this one's 25 it's not not much but it is a difference it's something to take into account a little bit higher on the storm strike to uh to trigger your lucky hits now you can go with cataclysm i think it sucks it was one of the most underwhelming ultimate skills in the game it was quite poor i, I really didn't like it i know it's a storm skill it kind of fits into the build but petrify is quite good it's quite good for survivability it's a real fast use it's just 
and it goes off. It's it's instant. You don't wait for like like random bolts to strike down like you do with the other other ultimate there. This is just an instant AOE, stuns enemies for three seconds. You deal 25% increased critical strike damage enemies affected by Petrify. And then against bosses, the critical strike damage is increased by 50%. And its duration is increased to six, six seconds. I like that they took into account, like, that might be a little bit weaker on bosses. So they, they bolstered that for bosses specifically. And then uh, the duration is increased by one second. And killing an enemy while Petrified grants 25 spirit, which is great. It means more tornadoes come out. We get to throw more of them, right? I prefer the Petrify. Survivability. Keeps enemies doing nothing, right? And if they're not doing anything, we're not taking damage from them. Uh, increase the amount of mortar fortified gain from all sources by 15%. 15% chance when struck by fortified to get 4% of your base life. Uh, sorry, 15% chance when struck to gain fortify for 4% of your base life. There we go. And then whenever you're stunned, immobilized, knocked down, fortify. Whenever you are stunned, immobilized, or knocked down, you get fortify for 20% of your base life. That's pretty good. If you do find yourselves with extra points, reducing the crowd control repairing effects, this is a good point. It's good, and then while you have Fortify for over 50% of your maximum life, it triples the effect. So it, it's quite good. Then Perfect Storm. Storm skills that you cast grant one spirit and deal 15% increased damage when damaging a vulnerable, immobilized, or slowed enemy, which is going to be pretty much everyone. It's pretty decent. It's not bad. It's uh, all around 15% damage uh, increase, and it you know it's multiplicative, so it's, it's good. It's very good. Paragon Tree. Uh, right off the bat, we have two additional points. So if you ever see something you want, you want to put two extra points in, go for it. It's just kind of the way it works out. Um, as always, every build, no matter what your build is, no matter what your class is, you should be grabbing both sides as a hardcore build. If you're not, you are making a mistake right off the bat. The life nodes are just too easy to grab. You have to get them, and every single class has life nodes on both sides. Get them for hardcore. 10% um, damage reduction while on human form. We will always be in human form for this build. So that's a pure 10% damage reduction. This should absolutely be your first glyph. No no exceptions, for hardcore at least. Um, 40 willpower we need. We got five, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40. So we're good there. We jet up out the top and we go into our Thunderstruck tree. Uh, we're going to go to the left side real quick. We're going to grab that that legendary. Storm, stri Storm skills deal 30% increased critical strike damage against vulnerable or immobilized enemies, and we're going to be doing a lot of both. Um, crit strike damage, more damage to vulnerable enemies. That's great. Moving on over, we get our, our life nodes, which is amazing for hardcore. We're going to jet up here. Critical strike damage, damage to crowd control enemies. So there's going to be a lot of um, immobilizing, so we'll be doing more damage to them. We get our lightning resist and more life an app, it's such an incredible uh, board, Thunderstruck. It's amazing. And then um, we jet over here. Our glyph is going to be 10% damage reduction against close enemies. You could change this if you want to go wind shear and stay pure ranged. But there will be enemies that do close the gap. They charge. They get to you very fast. And they you will take hits from close enemies as you're playing a ranged enemy. Just going to happen. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. We don't like it, obviously, but it will happen. There will be enemies that leap, that charge, that we don't really know every enemy out there. We don't know what's waiting for us. So... I would recommend this regardless of the build. Uh, moving up, we get our storm damage. That's good. And willpower. We get our uh, damage reduction from vulnerable enemies. Almost every enemy is going to be vulnerable at all times when we're fighting them. So we take less damage from them. That's great. Um, this tree here, Ancestral Guidance, is is one of the best Paragon trees I think I've ever seen. It, it's built quite well. Um, down here, there's there's your healing-specific stuff and spirit generation. But I don't really like those too much. These to the top left, the middle and the top left, it's just absolutely incredible. Um... Basic skill damage and core skill damage goes up, and in our skill tree, we do 5 out of 5 our basic skill, because it does do quite quite good damage for crowds. So increasing the basic skill damage is just incredible. It's so good for the build. And then we have more spirit and more life. Life is always good. Can't go wrong there. All resistances, which is amazing. And then we have more core skill damage. Just all around these four sections of magic uh, and rare nodes, it's just, they're so good. They're so... They're done properly. There's some boards out there that are quite bad and the druids they're all quite good so 12 percent increased uh, lightning damage to both healthy and injured enemies so when we start a fight and when we're ending a fight we're going to do more and more damage to them and that's good moving on up we enter the um constricting tendrils tree damage to crowd control enemies and life we get extra damage to elites and more nature damage so all of our all of our damage is going to be nature damage we grab one more legendary node nature magic skills have up to a 15 percent chance to entangle enemies with vines immobilizing them for two seconds so more immobilization we have a lot of the stuff that says hey when you hit a crowd control enemy this happens that's good we want more of that and poisoning them for 120 percent of the base damage over four seconds so you can see that 
we can make this a range build. We definitely can. We'll keep enemies immobilized, keep them away from us for the most part, and we don't really have to worry about them hitting us. So you can certainly do it as a range build. You can do it as a melee. This is still good even as melee. It really is. Uh, the poison is great. It's 120% of base damage over 4 seconds. That's not, not a bad addition at all. The glyph, nature magic skills deal 10% increased damage to crowd control or vulnerable enemies. And then uh, I chose this glyph here because it does 50% bonus to all magic nodes within range. Our magic nodes are life. We want that. They're also nature skill damage. We also want that. Nature magic skill damage on the rare, and of course more life on the rare node here. We have two two additional points. You can do whatever you want with them. If you happen to get to it to max, you can maybe grab more max spirit here. Do whatever you want. Two additional points. We're going to jump over to the stats tree right now and show you this. Something quite impressive. If you've been following builds, you've been looking at hardcore builds, 58% life. That is massive. That is huge. That's some of the highest you can ever get. And uh, I highly recommend going with very, very high life builds in hardcore. It really, really does help because life is everything, right? It's not a magic attack you're taking. It's not a physical attack or damage reduction. You don't have to worry about what it's reducing because it's not. It's life. It affects everything. Every source of damage is going to do, da do damage to your life. That is good. You want to have high life, I promise you. You won't do. You won't go wrong by getting high life. Resists are, of course, very important as well. 32.7% resist to all, quite good. 30% to lightning. So that's a good start. It's a good start for your resist. Obviously, in hardcore, you want to pay attention to your resists. Uh, gem for whatever resists are low. And make sure you uh, you stay alive. We get damage reduction from vulnerable, damage reduction while fortified. And keep in mind, we also get the... Um, down here, we get damage reduction from elites. We get more max life, um, more fortify from defensive skills. Whole lot of good stuff there. So you could really make this one of two builds. You could certainly go wind shear and, and grab lightning storm if you want. That's probably more of a soft core thing, lightning storm. But you could certainly do it. You can do wind shear and hardcore and still use tornadoes. That's certainly an option. But keep in mind, this is a little bit more of a melee type of skill, the hurricane. Not so much melee, it's it's ranged, it goes out away from you, but uh, if you're in melee, you're obviously going to hit everyone, the people aren't going to be out of the range. But it's good, because even if you're uh, ranged, you can use it to kind of kite away from enemies, slow them down with it as you're running away, and of course it reduces damage enemies take. It's just a pretty good guild, uh, pretty good guild, <laughs> pretty good build for, for a hardcore caster for, for druid. Uh, the other option is certainly going an Earth build, which is something I'm going to work on next, but I do really, really like the Storm build, and I'm confident in its survivability that I would safely run it in Hardcore and be happy with it. So guys, I hope you liked this um, this video. If you liked it, throw me a sub. Let me know in the comments if, if you're going to use the build, or you're going to use any different build, do you have any other variation on it. Uh, let me know what you think. And if you're looking for a guild for D4 or any other MMO coming out in the future, I know D4 is not an MMO, but we're an MMO guild and we're just doing D4 on the side. It's a great game, loving it. So you'll be seeing a lot of content from me streaming. Uh, I do a lot of build videos on stream as well. We spend about three or four hours a night going over builds with everyone. People bring their builds into the stream. And we kind of critique them and help them make it better. Come on, uh, join us in the stream. It's a good time. And it's a great way to stay in shape. <laughs> well, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.